as we lift up our hands. Will you meet us here as we call on your name? Will you meet us here? We have come to this place to worship you, God of mercy and grace. It is you. We adore. the Lord everybody and Merry Christmas to everybody amen wonderful to be get together on this day and and wow we're right down to the wire now and 2024 is just about uh, through or 2023 is just about through 
We don't want to give up our year yet. Amen. And start our start into a brand new year. But isn't hasn't God been good to us to bring us to this this time? Amen. And what great things God has done in our hearts and our lives. Why don't we give him a hand praise this morning? He's been good to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is so good. want to just mention quickly that, uh, well, let's go into our prayer focus this morning. We are praying for all of the young people in our district. Amen. And uh, they need our prayers. And so let's just uh, do that this morning as we begin to pray. Let's ask God to cover our young people with his presence. Amen. Lead them and guide them into their own relationship with him. Amen. And uh, while we're doing that, let's remember those that are already traveling and are away or those that are maybe not feeling well this morning, amen, that God would be with them. How many have a need? Do you have the need or you're connected to somebody this morning? Amen. Let's call these needs today to the Lord in prayer. Amen. And let's pray together this morning. Lord Jesus, thank you today, God, for this opportunity to be in your house and to worship you. Thank you for your presence this morning. We've come this morning to collectively worship you, oh God. Oh, let your presence reside in our hearts today, we pray. By the power of your Holy Spirit, we ask you today, be with our young people, oh God. Oh, God, touch them today, Lord. Cover them today, oh, God. Lead and guide them today, we pray. Lord Jesus, all across this district, in every local congregation, be with our young people, we pray. Oh, God, those that are not here today, those that are not well today, God, visit them this morning and be with them. Lord, let your spirit, your touch be upon them. Lord, every upraised hand today, every need, Lord, whether personal need or connected to our lives, I pray, God, that you would address every situation today. And we give you the praise and we give you the thanksgiving today. And we give, Lord, to you the honor and the glory that belongs to you today. And we praise you. And we ask these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, let's clap our hands to the Lord one more time. Amen. Amen. Wonderful candlelight service yesterday and uh, enjoyed the presence of the Lord. I felt God's spirit here as we began to tell the Christmas story. Amen. And wonderful presence of the Lord. Thank you for all those that pitched in and worked and helped and did the monologue and cleaned and set up and all the things that go into it. Amen. Things don't just happen by themselves, right? Amen. And so I appreciate all of those that have been part of our outreach efforts, whatever they may be, whether it's Christmas time or another time throughout the year. It's so important when we put our hands together to accomplish the work of God. Amen. Amen. We're going to... Uh, <coughs> receive our tithe and offering in just a minute and uh, the uh, dishes aren't back out here yet Steph are they oh they are a little wider than I was looking for amen and uh, while we do that just let me mention Thursday night no connect groups no new tracks Thursday night is our annual general business meeting if you're interested in the business side of things in the church uh, Thursday is the day and uh, we're going to probably not take a lot of your evening, probably about an hour, hour and a half, and, uh, and, and it, can be, it, can be, it can be fast or lengthy, just depends on the end of, those of you that come, amen. So uh, that's Thursday night, and, uh, and then uh, Saturday was scheduled for our annual planning session before praise and prayer, but I'm still trying to verify who all is going to be able to make that, and uh, so we'll we'll be notifying by e by text and email, Amen. Let's come and worship the Lord with our giving today, and uh, and uh, let God's presence touch our hearts today as we worship Him. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love. Is above all things His love endures forever Sing praise Sing praise The mighty hand and outstretched arm His love endures 
worship you this morning, God. I praise your name this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. To worship you, I live this morning, Jesus. To give you glory and honor, oh God, there is none like you. There is none worthy beside you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The three wise men came before the Lord when he was born. They presented to him gifts. Of course, we know they presented gold and frankincense and myrrh. This morning, I thought about what is the gift that we have to offer the Lord? What is it that we can come together on a Christmas Eve service and give to him? And what else could it be this morning besides our worship? That's what we have to offer him this morning. Amen. Our praise, that's what we have to give unto him this morning. Amen. I don't have a lot of money. I can, I can give the Lord, and, and we do that. But this morning, I want to give him my worship. Amen. I don't have a lot to, to give him uh, materially this morning. Certainly nothing that, how, what do you give the king of kings, the one who owns the cattle on a thousand hills? But I can come into his presence, and I can give him my life. I can give him my worship. I can offer to him the sacrifice of praise. Amen. And that's what I've come to do this morning. I've come to worship the Lord. I've come to worship the King. Amen. I've come to worship the one who gave his life for me today. Amen. Worship the King.
praise the Lord. Can we love the Lord today? Hallelujah. God, we praise you. We praise you. Thank you today for your goodness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And so wonderful today to be in his presence and to worship him. Amen. Jesus told the woman at the well, the time is come and now is that true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. I'm glad today that as we gather on this Christmas Eve morning, that we can come into his presence and worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we love him one more time today? Hallelujah. We praise you. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So good to see you this morning in the house of the Lord. Amen. And uh, just appreciative of the fact that we can come together to worship the Lord as we, as I said, in spirit and truth, but we can do that together. And that's what makes it special this morning. And I hope that, uh, that uh, the season has, has been good to you thus far and that you're, you've got great plans to uh, make connections with friends and family. Amen. It's a wonderful time of the year to do that and, and, uh, and just let the blessing of the Lord follow you wherever you go. Even when we uh, are with unchurched family, Amen. The presence of God can go with you. Amen. And touch their lives. And so we pray that you are, uh, you are, uh, have great plans and are going to enjoy a good time with, with friends and family. And, and of course, we've been enjoying good times as a church family. Amen. And just wonderful to be together this morning. Amen. Amen. It's good to see that John didn't wipe out all of his good looks there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Missed the candlelight service yesterday, though. Amen. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 11. I told my wife I had to work up my hour and a half message this morning. But she said she'd be glad to be here for the first 15 minutes of it. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. I know that several of you have plans already for this afternoon and, and getting together and so on. And so we will not be long this morning, but uh, Matthew chapter 2 and verse 11, describing the, uh, the wise men that came to, to bear gifts. It says, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with his with Mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him and when they had opened their treasures they presented unto him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh amen which is spices amen gold and frankincense and myrrh amen and I want to talk to you this morning and ironically Brandon was story getting into my message this morning Amen. But I want to talk to you about the right gift. Everybody say the right gift. The right gift. Amen. And uh, you may be seated. Have you ever agonized over getting that person, the loved one or a child or uh, someone, in a family member, the right gift? And I always hated trying to buy gifts for somebody that already had everything. It's just hard to do. You just don't know what to get them. And, uh, and so, you know, a lot of times there, uh, there are, you know, we rack our brain. We, we try to get uh, imaginative. And uh, when our kids were growing up, I was always disguising things and uh, leading them down the the wrong garden path, so to speak. And so that to ensure that it was 
a surprising gift, a, a, a gift that uh, they would appreciate but would be a surprise. Sometimes my, my deceptions got a little out of hand and uh, the kids would almost kill themselves trying to get to the next clue. And, uh, and so we had a lot of fun with it. But there's just something about, you know, getting the right gift. And the right gift for one is not the right gift for another person because that person may have no like or appreciation for what you may have got for someone else. Now, growing up, we didn't, we didn't have a lot. And so uh, our, our Christmases in my early years were quite sparse. And, uh, but we had a good time. We, we had uh, a time where we shared and uh, where we had a family together. And, and it was a special time. And uh, I, remember, I remember the year that we returned from the Philippines as a family. And of course, my mother was in the hospital. Our family was kind of scattered here and there, and then we had got, all gotten back together, which was uh, a wonderful blessing because our family was split up for almost two years. And, uh, and we'd gotten everybody back together in our immediate family. We're all living in the same house again. And that was a special Christmas, but we didn't have anything because we, we left the Philippines with the clothes on our back, basically. And of course... Uh, living in different places was, we were dependent on relatives and, and help and so on. And, and, uh, and so there just wasn't a lot. But I remember that this, the, the school took up a, uh, bought some gifts and gave, gave to us kids, which was, was not expected. And I remember too, that it was a, a big snowstorm. We had three feet of snow in the front yard that Christmas and everybody was basically snowed in. It was cold and, uh, and uh, it was just, but it was a special time because we were there together. And, uh, and so those gifts sometimes have had more meaning to me, even though they were not probably worth an awful lot. Looking back on it, they were plastic toys. They were, you know, uh, they were not expensive by any means, but it was just the right time, the right place, and the right gift. And, uh, and so uh, when we, we try to think of uh, what special thing that we could do for that, uh, that son or daughter or husband or wife or whatever it is that we're, uh, that we're trying to do, we want to get the right gift. Amen. Now, these wise men, magi, that had uh, noticed uh, that, that God was doing something, had followed God's uh, will, they were cognizant enough of what was going on that they prepared themselves and brought gifts. And we see here in this setting that uh, they brought the gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And so from that setting, the Christmas story often has pictured three wise men. We don't know how many wise men there were. I would, I would suggest there was probably quite a large group of them that had traveled together. Whether it be three or, or, or 10 or 15, we don't know how many. We just know that they brought gifts to the Savior. They brought gifts because they knew that God had, was taking them on a journey, amen, to meet his great plan for redemption. This Messiah child that they had studied about and that they had learned about and that they had been watching for had, had become a reality in their day, in their time, and they were given to go and to see and to witness and to worship and they brought with them gifts. Amen. As uh, Brother Brandon mentioned this morning, worship is one gift that we have to give. So really they brought four gifts that are mentioned here, gold and frankincense and myrrh and their worship. 
and they brought it all that they might uh, that they might be part of what God was doing in their day in their hour amen just as we agonize over getting the right gift for someone we've often over the years probably gotten gifts that we were really too interested in personally and uh, and so uh, so the practice some people have gotten fallen into is regifting, <laughs> giving to someone else what you got last year that you didn't want, Amen. And uh, and so don't tell me it doesn't happen, <laughs> Amen. Don't tell me it doesn't happen. I know people that practice that quite regularly, and uh, and so you've received gifts that you really haven't been personally that interested in. And, uh, and so the right gift becomes a, a, an important thing in a sense. And, and the thing that we need to realize about our God is the principle that he taught us that, that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. Obviously, it had been mentioned enough times by the Lord that looking back over that time, the writer Luke writes in the book of Acts, and the remembrance is that you remember uh, how he taught us it is more blessed to give than to receive. He said, remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now, as children, we're more interested in receiving. Amen. And uh, we enjoy that aspect. And I suppose that it's always nice to be on the receiving end of blessings, right? Amen. I like to be blessed, don't you? Amen. Blessing is a very, uh, a very important thing. Uh, it, it, it helps keep us rejuvenated and, and interested and engaged in all of that. But Jesus said there's a principle that is greater than just receiving things, and that is having the capacity to give more than you receive. Jesus embodied this principle. John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God showed and embodied the fact that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. This is why later it could be written in the Scripture, Amen, freely has been given to you, freely received. And so we are able to enjoy, amen, the great gifts that God gives to us, amen. Not only the gift of salvation, but the gift of his presence in our lives. I was praying this week, and often as I do when I pray, I thank God for his presence in my life, amen. What would I do without God's presence in my life? I don't even want to know what I would do, amen. But I am cognizant of the fact that it is a great gift and a great blessing to have the very presence of God in my life, amen. And to have that presence is such a blessing. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18, or verse uh, 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 8, wherefore he saith, when he has ascended up on high, Led captivity cap captive, he gave gifts. Everybody say gifts. Yes. Amen. He gave gifts to men. Your God is a gift giver. Yes. Amen. He gives the right gifts to you. Amen. You don't even know some of the gifts that God has given to you. Yes. They're laying dormant right now, waiting to be discovered and revealed 
as his presence and his spirit works in your life and as he develops you and as you walk before God, there are latent gifts in each of your lives today that God has given to you and they are remaining to be discovered and revealed by the presence of God. And in due time and in the right circumstance, God is going to reveal those gifts that he has given to you. Amen. Because he's a gift giver. He gives gifts to men. Amen. And he has given you gifts. In the parable of the talents, we see this. Of the three that is described here, he gave one to five, one to two, and another uh, one talent. Each one of them, the Bible says, he gave each to, their, to them according to their there are several abilities. I would suggest it's not talking about their, uh, the talents that they did possess or knew they possessed, but rather, amen, how they would respond to the gifts that God gave to them in their lives. Amen. The man with the five talents came with another five, and the man with the two, another two. Amen. This is the principle of God. To each of us are given Amen. The gifts that are uh, proper and right, amen, according to what we will do with it, how we will respond to it, and what we will allow God's presence to develop in our lives. I'm thankful today that God's a gift giver. And on top of all of that, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a reason why the scripture calls it Amen. And describes it in terms that is a gift. It is given to us, freely given to us. Amen. Oh, what a wonderful thing. The promise of his spirit. Everybody, amen, needs the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everybody needs to have that experience. And not just one time, folks. Amen. But over and over Amen. As Paul writes in Titus chapter 3, we are saved by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That spirit that can be renewed in us every day. Amen. Every week, every month. Amen. We can have the renewing of God's spirit. Amen. And it's a gift that just keeps, amen, keeps being open. You just open it, come back tomorrow and you can unwrap it and open it again. Amen. You can do it in your good times. You can do it in your bad times. Amen. You can do it when things are going well and when challenges face, are, are faced in your life on every hand. Amen. Because his, his spirit is a gift that has been freely given to us so that we might freely receive it. Amen. And so it is that that. Giving the right gift is, is a very enjoyable thing. Jesus, amen, finds it very enjoyable to give gifts to you today. Amen. And just as we have received, so also there should be a desire in us to reciprocate, to give back to God in some measure. Amen. I have found a great joy in giving. Amen. I would, uh, I would rather give than receive. And I probably wasn't always there, but, but over the years of time, I have discovered that there is joy in giving. Amen. The Lord God wants us today, amen, to reciprocate in our relationship. It's not that he needs anything. Amen. I, I, I preached a message one time and uh, I'll probably do it some other time at some other date, years ago now. Amen. What to give to God who has everything. Amen. And the point of that message that day was the fact is the only thing that God is really interested in today is you. Amen. He has the cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. The, the, er, heaven is his throne, earth is his footstool. Amen. Everything in the world that the world contains is his. Amen. He can do, he does not need us to give him anything. 
except that which only we can give him. And that is our heart, our life, our soul. Amen. And place it in his hands. So it was one day that Jesus was faced with a, a great challenge. There was thousands of people that sat before him. They had come to listen to him teach and hear him as he spoke. And now being far removed from cities and, uh, and provisions, they are hungry. And, and Jesus desires, amen, to feed these people. And we won't spend a lot of time talking about how he conjoled the disciples to be, get involved in the process and all of that. But simply to say that at the end of the day, Jesus simply asked the question, what do we have? And the answer was, we've looked and we've searched. We can't find anything but this one young lad who has a few loaves of bread and a few fishes. And then the disciples said, but what are they among so many, so many people? 5,000 men, not counting women and children. Thousands there that day. And just a few loaves and a few fishes. In the greater scope of the miracle, the feeding of such a great number with such little, uh, little substance, uh, not only was uh, miraculous and what captures our attention in the story, but we forget about it all came from the gift of a young lad. Amen. The miracle was built on what a young lad was willing to give to Jesus. I know we relegate it to a simple uh, a Sunday school story and our children learn, learn it and it's a beautiful story, but amen. It also gives to us a uh, a outline. It gives to us a picturegram, if you please, of how valuable it is when we give something to God and what He can do with our gift when we give ourselves to Him. It was simply His small lunch. It was simply a few loaves and a few fishes. And, and, and it was not sufficient, but God knows how to take the gifts that we give him and make them into something that is, amen, that is, is, is uh, enough. It is sufficient and will do what is needed to be done. 5,000 men were fed that day, plus all the others that were attached. Jesus provided a miracle, but a young lad provided the gift that would cause the, the miraculous, the miracle, the feeding of the 5,000. Amen. And so it is today on this Christmas Eve morning. We are, amen, we are gift givers. We give to each other gifts. We bless each other in various ways. We extend the gift of friendship and fellowship and love and care. Amen. This is all proper. It's all good. I know that there are some people that uh, uh, want to make Christmas something else, uh, either good or evil. Amen. And I've, I find today, at least as far as I'm concerned, I'm comfortable with understanding that my God, amen, is a God of celebration and he is a God of Amen. Of gift giving. He gives gifts to us and, and so on. I'm not opposed. We can, we can take it out of balance. We can take it out of the place where it is right. But here on this day, on this Christmas Eve day, amen, we will be meeting with more friends and family, perhaps co-workers and so on. And uh, there will be gifts given, but there is nothing more important today than the gift of you. Amen. Giving of yourself, giving of yourself in relationship to others, giving yourself in fellowship with God's church, giving yourself, amen, by extending your hand to others, giving your ha yourself, amen, to Jesus Christ in worship and in, amen, your life itself. Amen. Romans chapter 12 says, 
Verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, amen, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. On this Christmas uh, season in 2023 today, we are challenged to bring the gift of ourselves first to God and then to others. Amen. And so today, what is the right gift? Well, amen, you can buy it off with money, with material things, but really today, you are the right gift. Amen. You are the gift that the Lord is desiring today. Amen. You are the gift that he seeks for today. And we are the gift of God to our world, to our loved ones, to our friends, to our neighbors today. You are the right gift. Praise God. Can we stand together this morning? We are, amen, the gift that God desires today. Amen. There's a song we used to sing, and I'm not suggesting we sing it this morning, but all he wants is you and nothing else will do. Not just a part, but he wants all of your heart. All he wants is you. Amen. And so on this Christmas Eve day, in the midst of this Christmas season. Amen. God's Spirit is looking to you today to see what you're willing to give to Him in return for all that He's done in your life. Amen. I want to give Him the right gift today. I want to give Him myself. And I think today, the hour's early. We haven't taken a lot of time today. But just as we worship him, let's, let's all come around the front today. And amen. Let's just purpose in our hearts. We're going to give God a little more of ourselves this year. Amen. This season. Amen. We're going to give, amen, ourselves to God in new ways and a new fashion. Can we worship the Lord together today? This is my Hallelujah. Desire Thank you, Jesus. To honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship
That's where you'll find everything that you need. When you see his face, you'll draw near to us in the presence of the Holy God. In the presence of you today. Thank you. Thank you for the great gift that you've given to us. God, we in turn desire to give back to you. Lord, we offer you today our hearts, our lives today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your great, great generosity today. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We want to take a special moment of prayer you're going to be connecting with people this next week or so that perhaps you don't connect with so often throughout the year. Your family, your friends, perhaps co-workers. Amen. We're going to pray for them today. Amen. And we're going to pray that God's anointing would be on you so that his presence, his presence could be felt as we gather together and as we enjoy one another and we connect, amen. And I believe that if we pray in such a fashion that God will help us and anoint us and his presence will go with us, amen, amen, amen. John, could you lead us in prayer for that this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you today, God. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. Let your anointing, your presence flow, God, in every gathering, in every gathering. Let your presence, Lord, flow from our lives, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Oh, yes, Lord. Let your blessings be upon our connections, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord in appreciation today. God is so good. Amen. 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 And we wish you a very blessed Christmas today, this season, this week. Amen. Enjoy yourselves and We'll be back next Sunday is a one service Sunday as well, 11 o'clock. And I'm going easy on you this year. <laughs> going easy on you. Amen. But God bless you. Have a great time Praise this week. Amen. Don't forget Thursday night for those that are interested is the annual general business meeting for the church. And we will be in contact about Saturday. Praise God.